Hello and happy Monday. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, today we are going to be interviewing Miss Tracy June as she shares with us her story and how she has had to um, turn her life around, um, advocate for herself, and meanwhile, advocating for others. Um, I hope that you will join us as we invite her to um, interview with us on the Speak Up and Inspire series. But while we are waiting for her, we have a lot, a lot going on this weekend, um, or should I say this week. So today we are going to be interviewing uh, Tracy June. She is an advocate in her community. We are also going to be interviewing Miss Shatera tomorrow. Um, Miss Shy is dealing with a very serious um diagnosis or illness. Um, and she shared with me um, some of the ups and downs of navigating in the healthcare system to get the help that she needs, including um, with Medicaid. Um, she has a powerful story that she is living right now. And so I would invite you to join us again tomorrow night at eight o'clock for a special broadcast interview with Ms. Shai to talk about um, her illness and also what she's had to go through in the healthcare system to get what she needs. Um, as of today, she is still in the hospital. She's been in the hospital for about a week now, um, and this has become her norm for her. So I hope that you will tune in tomorrow at eight to not only support us, but also to support her as she speaks up on um, I don't want to say negligence, but on the issues, the problems, um, change that needs to take place in the healthcare system to help people when they really are desperately and sincerely in need of healthcare support, um, finances, uh, resources, and services. So tomorrow we have scheduled a special interview um, with Miss Shy, and she will be on with us tomorrow night at eight o'clock. We also have been invited to LOL Thursdays this Thursday at Hollywood Nights. We are going to be going out there to um, interview the promoter, Mr. VDOT or Anwar Sims, um, as he hosts the LOL Thursdays at Hollywood Nights. I'm really looking forward to um, going out. Um, I love comedy. If you love comedy, come and meet me out there. Um, you might get a chance to meet uh, VDOT yourself um, because I am going to be interviewing him and getting there so that I can talk to him before the show and possibly um, during break so that we can get to know him. Um, he is a businessman. He's a professional. He's an entrepreneur. Um, he's an amazing and talented photographer and he's a promoter. So I'm going to be going out on Thursday to support him. So if you do not have plans on Thursday night, come and join me for LOL Thursdays at Hollywood nights. Um, you will see me posting about the event all week. So please make sure that if you do not have any plans on Thursday, that you come on out. Um, I would really love to see all of you. Also, on Sunday, I am looking forward to the album release party for Hank Bilal. He is doing his album release party this Sunday evening. Um, I know that there's football going on. I know there's a lot of tailgates going on. But guess what? This is an album release party that is taking place right here in the Queen City. And we have been invited. You have been invited. All of us have been invited to come out and celebrate Hank Bilal's album release party. He has also signed up to be um, a sponsor for Speak Up and Inspire series. So we are happy to have him on. Thank you again for becoming a sponsor for the Speak Up and Inspire series. And just really um, uh, appreciating our mission. Um, uh, supporting our mission and making a donation to us so that we can continue doing what we're doing. And that it means having our live podcast, talking to inspirational people in the community, but also going out in the community and meeting you where you are. So not only are we on Facebook Live, but we are coming to your businesses. We are coming to your events. Um, we are coming to um, your volunteer events. Um, we're just coming out in the community to support the people that we interview here on the Speak Up and Inspire series, but also um, people that are doing events that are making a difference, that are entertaining your soul and 
just want to get their word out even more. Um, Anwar invited us to come out there on Thursdays or VDOT, also known as VDOT, should I say. Um, and also on Sunday, we are going to the album release party of Hank Bilal. So I am looking forward to this week. It is going to be fun filled um and inspirational inspirational and fun filled so um thank you again to um everyone this week who is uh helping us keep our mission and our purpose to um inspire the community for through our voices and our actions um and again special thank you to mr hank Bilal for signing up to be a sponsor of the speak up and inspire series if you are interested in sponsoring us that means that you believe in our in our mission and you want to see us continue to interview inspirational people on live and in the community. If you want to support us, please reach out to us and message us at the Speak Up and Inspire series on Facebook. Or you can send me a personal email to SUIS, which stands for Speak Up and Inspire series, podcast at gmail.com. That's SUIS podcast at gmail.com. I see that our guest for tonight, Miss Tracy, is on right now and she is watching. So we are going to just go ahead and get right into it. Um, we um, have Miss Tracy. She was referred to me um, by Mr. Jonathan Coleman. I'm trying to get because I can't see myself. Well, I'm not trying to see myself, but the, the, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. The light is horrible where I am anyway, and it looks dark. So, um, we are going to be interviewing Miss Tracy June. Um, I was referred to her by Jonathan Coleman. Thank you, Jonathan Coleman, for always referring some exceptional people to me. Um, shout out to Mr. Coleman for also being on our on our podcast. But he is also a promoter. Um, he does marketing as well. So if you have a small business um, or you have a big business, you're an entrepreneur, a professional, you're looking to brand yourself, then please, please, please reach out to Jonathan Coleman if you are looking for some marketing um, or promotion for you your business. He's amazing. Um, he has done a lot of good promotion for um, Butterfly. has um, been very supportive when it comes to referring people to me for the Speak Up and Inspire series that he knows fits our mission and our goal. So I see that Miss Tracy is, well, she was watching, waiting for her to get back on so that we can add her and interview her. We are waiting. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you again for referring Miss Tracy. Um, I'm trying to get her back on. So maybe you can help me out with that. If you can send her a quick message and tell her that I am waiting for her to sign in. She was there, but now she's gone. Um, while we are waiting for Miss Tracy to sign in again, um, I was talking too much and she went away. Um, while we are waiting for her, I wanted to go ahead and do what I do every single Monday is I ask you a personal question so that you can give me your, me your feedback about you. So if you are a business owner or you sell services or you have a product that you would like to put out there, please comment and put your business, website, Facebook links, Instagram links, Twitter links, whatever links that you have for your business service or product in the comment line so that we can see it. Everybody can see it. Um, so, no, I don't have a question this time. I just want you to advertise free advertising to all of our listeners, which we have quite a lot, <laughs> thankfully, and blessed. Um, so please put your links for your business, your services, your products in the comment box so that everybody can see it. Um, I see that Tracy is still trying to get on and and she's gone again so <laughs> i would just keep on talking until i see her pop up and actually stay for a second so that i can add her um this week i told you that we are going to be very very busy out in the community but also i want to talk to you about the fact that this is the last week of september which means that we are about to go into october and if you know anything about awareness months you know that october is domestic violence 
Awareness Month, but it is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so we're going to be really, really busy. As um, the founder of Butterfly Visions Project, which is an advocacy organization for um, victims of domestic violence, but also a network for advocates and survivors, we're going to be really, really busy. So I'm going to be a little bit more active on the Speak Up and Inspire series this month, talking to you and shouting out different events that um, are taking place. Um, but also just as I go to different events, going live for a second to let you know how things are going and just to give praises and support to all of the event hosts that are hosting events for the month of October for Breast Cancer and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I see Tracy, she is watching. Let me get her on now. But while we are doing that, please post your links for your services, your products, um, your business, whatever it is that you want to share with our listeners. And I will make sure that I am sharing them throughout the month of October. So I'm going to bring Tracy on right now while I have her. Thank you, Lenise. Uh, Miss Lenise is going to be one of our sponsors for BVP Kids. She is going to be doing our shirts for us, for the BVP Kids and our mentor, mentors. So thank you, Miss Lenise. She does custom design t-shirts, printing t-shirts. So please, please, please uh, make sure that you support her. She has her link in the comments. Hello, Miss Shy. How are you? I'm looking forward to our interview tomorrow, love. Hello, Juan. How are you? Hello, Mr. Abdullah. Thank you for supporting this week. Um, we interviewed Abdullah last week um, on our show. He had some very, very strong things to say about being a father, being a Black man, about relationships, and all of that good stuff. So if you missed his interview last month, please go to our page, the Speak Up and Inspire series page, so that you can watch his interview from last, um, from last week. We are still trying to add Tracy on. So while we are adding her, hello, Zan, how are you doing? Um, it says, Alex, auto lock out services, $50, the cheapest in town. So if you are locked out of your car, which has happened to me a couple times, um, <laughs> you can look them up. Alex, auto lock out services, $50. He says it's the cheapest in town. And um, I'm assuming, because he's putting them out there, that they do good work. So you don't have to worry about your car getting towed up while you're trying to get your car unlocked. So that's Alex Auto Lockout Services for $50. You're welcome, Lenise. You're welcome. Yes, Ms. Shai, we will be talking to you tomorrow on our special interview. Also, while we are trying to get um, Tracy to join, Tracy, if you are trying to connect via your, um, your laptop or your desktop, it will not work. You have to use your phone. So if that's what's going on, you have to use your phone. Some, for some reason, Facebook does not let you do live interviews via, um, if I'm on my phone and you're via your phone. So use your phone to connect, to watch, and to come on live. So um, also, we are shouting out different um, businesses right now and the different services. Tracy, I see you watching. You need to connect via your phone, not a desktop, not a laptop. You have to connect via your phone to be able to be added. I'm about to send you another request for you to join. Because this is October that is coming and it is Breast Cancer or Domestic Violence Awareness Month, please also drop your flyers in the, con in the comments or type in what your events are, including the dates, the times, and where they are, or your event links so that people can find out how they can support Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, Tracy, I sent you an in invitation to join the podcast. Yes, you are here, and I sent you a request. It should say join live podcast. You just have to accept the invitation to come on. 
Hi, Lakeisha, how are you? Thank you for joining us like you have been the last couple of Mondays. I really appreciate that. Right now we are posting our domestic violence and breast cancer awareness events in the comment line. We are also posting our and our services in the comments so that people can see them and we can share them throughout the month. We are still trying to get Tracy on. Um, Jonathan, I see you watching. Can you reach out to Tracy? Because if I do it, I'm going to disconnect. Can you reach out to Tracy, please, and see if you can help her get on with us? I would appreciate it. So um, while we are waiting for Tracy to come on, while we are waiting for Tracy to come on, I'm going to tell you about BVP Kids. So BVP Kids is a youth organization that Butterfly Visions Project has started to help youths in our community. When we come in contact with moms or dads who are victims of domestic violence or sexual assault, oftentimes we meet their kids as well. Um, either the kids are with them in the DV shelters or they are living or staying with the victim. And so we meet a lot of kids in the community over the last couple of years. So last year, we, start, um, we started a youth program, but this year we started right before school started. So now we're gonna have a whole full year versus last year um, when we only had <clears throat> we only had a few months left in the school year. So this year we started now we have 13 kids and about 12 mentors. I just added on one person, so my count might be off, um, that are right now are dedicating their time, their efforts, their expertise, and their advocacy skills to our kids, our BVP kids for free. So our mentors are not paid. They are all volunteers. And to me, that makes it even better for us or the mentors because they're doing it from their heart. They're not getting paid to, to spend this time. They're not getting paid to spend time with the kids or to mentor them or to support them. They are all volunteers. They are all advocates in the community. They all have their own businesses and they are working with kids in the community um, that want to be more involved or they want to have support throughout the school year. So BVP Kids, we have a Facebook page now. Please go to our Facebook page, BVP Kids. Like our page so that you can see what's going on. The kids are going to be out with us in the community for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, they're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun while we're helping people in the community. So if your kids could benefit from the support of a experienced mentor um, that is already active in the community, that is passionate about helping um, the community and, and your children and our children, then reach out to me so I can tell you more about the program for your kids. If you're interested in being a mentor, reach out to me as well. We could use more mentors because we are adding kids weekly um, and we do not want to um, how can I say, overburden our mentors with too many um, mentees. We want them to be dedicated to their mentees and not have too many. So we are adding mentors often um, so that we are giving uh, those mentors two to three kids max. We do not want them having um, a handful of kids that they cannot give their undivided attention to. Um, Tracy, I'm not really sure what's going on. I've sent the... Um, I've sent the request to you uh, probably eight times now, so I'm not really sure why you're not seeing it. Um, go to your notifications um, and see if it's there. It's not going to be a pop-up. Go to your notifications. Again, you must be on your phone um, for you to be able to join. If you are not on your phone, you will not be able to join. Um, also, it should be in your notifications, an invitation from me to join the podcast live. Um, if you are unable to do it, I'm not quite sure. Um, 
what could be going on on your end. I'm sorry, love. So again, go to your notifications. In there, it should have me sending you a request to join the podcast live. Um, I've sent the request to you several times, so I'm not really sure why you're not seeing it. But I will still be here. I'm going to be here until 9 o'clock waiting for you so that we can hear your story. Um, also, we've talked about BVP Kids. We've talked about this being Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We have a lot of events going on. Um, this Saturday, October 1st, I am going to be attending the Rebirth Gala with Irish Benton and Diva Nation. She has putting she is putting on this event i'm sorry this saturday it's called rebirth of king and queens um one of the our board members miss katrina thomas is going to be honored there so we are going to support her and miss irish Benton of diva nation um to celebrate survivors stories to support network um, and just fellowship with one another. This is the month for a lot of us as advocates to get together and just support each other as much as we can. Um, and so this Saturday, I'll be going to that. It's from five to nine. It's the event is called Rebirth of Thomas is going to be honored there. So I will be going there to support not only Irish Benton of Diva Nation, but I will also um, be going to support Katrina as well. There's also an event on October 12th. I will personally be speaking at that event. Ms. Vicki Humphreys is doing that event and it is the Stop Domestic Violence Gala. It is going to be on October 12th from 4 to 8 p.m. I will put both of these events on my page throughout the week and leading up to the events. If you are looking for a way to support um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, these are going to be exceptional events. Again, October 5th, Diva Nation Irish Benton is hosting that event. And then on October 12th, um, Vicki Humphreys is hosting the Stop the Violence, or start, sorry, Stop the Violence Domestic, <laughs> Domestic Violence Banquet. <laughs> sorry. And I am going to be speaking there personally at the October 12th event. There are so many events going on this month. Again, post your events in the comments, post your businesses and services in the comments, and we will make sure that we share them throughout the month. Um, hi, Tracy. I see that you're here, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I'm sending you the, the link. So I'm just filling in time right now. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Tracy. Uh, what we can do is next time we'll do a practice um, to see what's going on. So that way we can be um, better prepared next time. Not really sure what's going on because I'm seeing you and I'm sending you um, requests to add you. But for some reason, I'm not sure why you're not seeing it. Um, so we will reschedule if you're not able to get on um, by nine o'clock. We will definitely reschedule because I really want to hear your story. You became, you came highly recommended by um, Jonathan. So I really want to hear your story. So if I can't get you on here by nine, then um, we will definitely reschedule for a special interview. Um, with that in mind, I am going to go to do some research of my own. And what I am going to do is I'm going to talk about so this is domestic violence awareness month and it is october um it is every october and i'm looking at the website breakthesilence.org um and i'll just read you what it says it says it's national domestic violence awareness month and it says that october is national domestic violence awareness month which first began in 1981 by the national coalition against domestic violence as a day of unity to connect battered women's advocates across the country uh, domestic violence affects millions both women and men of every race religion culture and status it's not just punches in black eyes it's yelling humiliation stalking manipulation coercion threats and isolation. So I think it's very important for us to have a little educational moment for a second. Most of you know this, but there are different types of domestic violence. Of course, there's the obvious. 
the one that is physical, the one that leaves the bruises and the scars, that is physical abuse of domestic violence. There's also sexual domestic violence where your intimate partner, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever that you're intimate with decides to one, take advantage of you sexually, um, take sex from you, which in uh, definition would be rape or sexual assault. Um, also withholding sex is another form of sexual abuse. Um, there's so many different, uh, how can I say, situations I can say that would um, attribute to sexual abuse, but it's covered under domestic violence, especially if it's between intimate partners. So there's no such thing as a husband taking sex from his wife and it not being rape. It is rape. If your wife says no and you take it from her, it is rape. If your girlfriend tells you no and you take it, it is rape. If your boyfriend says no or your husband says no and you force them to have sex, it is rape. So sexual abuse is a form of domestic violence, especially because it's between intimate partners. Then there is emotional and mental abuse. Sometimes it's hard to determine between the two, but emotional and mental abuse consists of putting someone down, belittling, belittling them, making someone feel worse than they are, calling them out of their names um, constantly, um, just tearing a person down with your words and th with emotions, telling them that no one else is going to love them, um, uh, telling, calling them fat and ugly and calling them bitches and so forth and so on. Um, making a person feel like they're unworthy of love and everything that goes with it. Um, how can I say? Uh, calling a person names, but also isolating. Isolation is a form of emotional and mental abuse as well. Isolating, meaning that when you're involved with someone and they isolate you from your friends, family, and your community, then that is a form of emotional and mental abuse as well. So there are so many different forms of each category of domestic violence, but there are different categories. It's not just physical, it's sexual, it's emotional, it's mental, and there's also financial, withholding funds, not allowing the, the mate to work to support themselves, um, not giving them the, the necessities that they need, food, water, shelter that they need, holding those things over their head, um, possibly uh, withholding, say a person is working, the partner makes them give them their paycheck or all their money that they earned. And so that person does not have access to their own funds. So those are the type of things that would be considered uh, financial abuse. So again, there is physical, there is emotional, there is mental, there is sexual, there is financial. Those are the different types of abuse that happen in intimate partner relationships, whether you're married, committed, living together, if all of these things happen within an intimate relationship, it is considered domestic violence all the way around. So those are the def different definitions. If you want to add some different scenarios um, to the comments that could be uh, attributed to domestic violence, please feel free. Because, of course, even though uh, I speak on it, not always do I remember everything and I always can I share everything. So to continue talking about the Nas National Domestic Violence Awareness Month says that since the Violence Against Women Act passed in 1994, we've come a long way. This landmark legislation led by then Senator Joe Biden combined new provisions that hold offenders accountable and provide programs and services for victims. Between 1993 and 2010, the overall rate of domestic violence dropped nearly two thirds and state laws have reformed to address issues such as dating abuse in the workplace, stalking, employment discrimination, and more. So today I was talking, or there was a post um, up by Valerie Simon, um, and she was talking about that there, I believe, were 28 domestic-related homicides um, so far this year in North Carolina, and I believe that was locally. Um, I thought about that for a second, and while that is definitely a tragedy, 
I did make note of the fact that it is lower than it was this time last year. So this time last year, I believe we had, I want to say double that, but it was definitely more than 10 of what it is currently. So it's about 28 domestic re domestic related homicides that have taken place. Those num this number this year is lower than the number last last year. And so what I said to Valerie is that even though it's a tragedy and even though it, we still have work to do, the numbers have gone down. So let's take a moment to celebrate a small victory. Let's just take a moment to do that. If you know anyone who has been a victim of domestic violence or has been a victim of domestic violence related homicide, then please, please be active this month in Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we're gonna take a moment of silence to observe those victims who have lost their lives so far this year. Thank you. I appreciate you staying on with me while we did that. Um, there are so many things that are gonna be happening this month. If there's ever been a moment in your life or in your time or in your, um, your to-do list of wanting to give back to the community, this is the month to do it. Domestic violence is in every neighborhood, every race, every culture, every age group, every religious group that there is. We cannot ignore that. And fortunately, but unfortunately, Domestic violence is in the news more than it was 10 years ago, definitely 20 years ago, and probably non-existent 50 years ago. That being said, even though domestic violence is, is recognized in the media when a celebrity is hurt or killed, or it's a high profile case, it still is getting the recogn recognition that it needs. Here in Charlotte, North Carolina, I am um, on the event committee with the DVAC, um, and I also work very closely with the county. And I must say that Mecklenburg County is starting to make bigger, better, and broader efforts when it comes to domestic violence here in Mecklenburg County, but also in Charlotte. And there are many surrounding counties in North Carolina who are taking domestic violence seriously, who are linking and sharing, networking and communicating between counties to be able to provide services to victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. But this month we're talking about domestic violence. I myself um, have been a victim of domestic violence and that is one of the reasons why I decided to speak up and share my story and become an advocate against domestic violence because it is something that I've experienced through several relationships throughout my life. And I had to come to a point in my life where I had to realize that I had to take some accountability for getting in positions or getting in relationships that were volatile, that were toxic but I also had to find out the reason why I was in these relationships. And part of it started from experiencing domestic violence in different homes, um, seeing, uh, um, being in relationships at an early age where the person that I was dating was older and they took advantage of me as as a young woman. Um, also, just seeing how the, the breakdown of families these days, and then also being witness to violence in my own home. Um, that's not something that I, I share a lot, but you know, 
my parents argue pretty, pretty bad. And I think back then, um, I don't want to say that it was domestic violence, but it was definitely inappropriate for two people <laughs> to engage in the types of activity or the types of arguments and blow ups and, and things that happened in my home, even as a child. Um, that got better as I got older and they, um, got counseling themselves and, uh, and dedicated themselves to God together and studied together and the Bible together. But I did see things in my home that probably a, sh a child shouldn't see. And many, many victims of domestic violence have also experienced it in their childhoods as well and see, and find that the reason why they are drawn to toxic relationships is because they grew up in toxic relationships. That's something that I wanted to break the cycle when it came to my kids. And so I made sure that I went to counseling and I got out of a domestic violence um, relationship because I didn't want my children to that. I didn't want that to be their norm. And so I encourage all of you to look at your relationships and look at your upbringing and to see if maybe there were signs of domestic violence when you were growing up. If you've ever been a victim of domestic violence, did you experience it yourself as a child? Um, or were you brought up to told or to feel as if it's okay for a man to constantly put his wife down, calling her names and making her feel like crap? Um, was it okay for a man to, to hit his wife? Was it okay for a woman to beat up on her, on her husband for whatever reason, just because she's mad? Um, when you were growing up, did you live up, live in an environment where there was violence constantly around you? There are so many different situations um, that take place in childhood that contribute to us as adults that um, as a victim before and as a survivor now, I really had to go back into my own history um, to find out why I was drawn to certain types of men. Um, once I started to realize that there was a pattern in my life that started from childhood, I started to be able to filter out the things that I needed to fix, correct, um, forgive, um, overcome. And once I started doing that, I was, I was able to, to start to appreciate the fact that I deserved better. Some people never get the opportunity to get out of a domestic violence relationship because either they're killed or that's all they know. And so they stay. So I'm proud to say that I'm a survivor. I'm proud that my children are not growing up in a physically abusive home. Um, but I think it's also important to to bring out the fact that even though I have not been hit in a long time, I have dealt with emotional and mental abuse. Um, I don't know which one is worse. I don't know if the bruises and the scars are worse or the um, the the defamation to your character, the broken heart, the 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 manipulation, so forth. I don't know which one is worse, but what I can say is that the mental, emotional, and physical um, domestic violence, all of them, all of them are abuse. All of them are equally worthy of recognizing and getting out. Um, all of them are worthy of being. Um, of raising awareness about in the community because some people are so used to the yelling and the cussing and the screaming and the putting down of each other, so forth and so on, that they think that's normal and that that's love. And it's not, it's not, it's not love. When a person constantly makes you feel unworthy, hopeless, lost your faith, just feeling so bad about yourself that you might not even want to be here anymore or that, you know, there's no, there's nothing else out there for you. If a person ever makes you feel so low that you don't even know who you are anymore and you've lost yourself because of this person and how they make you feel, then that's emotional and mental abuse and you should not stand for it. Be strong, know who you are, understand your value, 
and do what you need to do to get out of that situation. Emotional and mental abuse is just as tragic, just as traumatic as physical abuse and sexual abuse. It is. I've experienced it. Um, and sometimes I would, I would rather be hit than to feel the way I've, I've felt, feeling like, like nothing inside because of someone else and what they've done and said to me. All of those things are physical, I'm sorry, emotional and mental abuse. And they're all worthy of you taking a stand back to see exactly what is going on in your relationship and doing something about it before you completely lose yourself or your life. So that is my spill on domestic violence for right now. Um, I don't mind sharing my personal story. Um, I think it's important for me to share my personal story um, because now I truly, truly feel like a survivor. Um, but also because there are so many people out there who are going through situations and living in environments and staying in relationships that they should not be in or can't get out of or is too scared to run away from or fear for their lives. And I just want to tell you that I am here for you. If you are listening and you know someone who is in a situation that is unhealthy and unsafe and toxic and tragic, please, if you don't refer them to me, then refer them to someone that can get them help. And I will do everything 360% in my power to help them. Um, because I had someone that helped me. I had a, a, a network of people that helped me. And so now I'm returning that to, to you, to any victim out there, even survivors. We still need, we, we still need support too, because sometimes we go through it and that's okay. That's part of being human. Being a survivor doesn't mean that you, that you are always strong because we always, always are connecting with people who are still going through it. But we're imperfect and we have those moments. I know I do. And if you're listening and you're a survivor or an advocate, I know you do as well. So before we end, I have a very, very, very special announcement. I am very happy to say that a couple of weeks ago, I put it out there. Um, I put it out there for anyone that was interested in being a co-host with me on the Speak Up and Inspire series. I have to stand up. My legs are bothering me. <laughs> um, so I put it out there and I had a couple of emails and a couple of um, uh, a lot of people, Not well, not a lot, but Mm. <laughs> I had a few people that stated that they would love to be um, a co-host for the Speak Up and Inspire series, not just because um, they wanted to show their face on Monday night at eight o'clock, but because they really, really supported what we are doing again. And I say this all the time. It is not about me. It is about the people in the community who are doing great things in the community. It's not about me at all. This is not the Speak Up and Inspire series, Tiffany. This is the Speak Up and Inspire series, you, um, Mr. Thompson, uh, Jonathan Coleman, Cedric Sanders, Delvon Harling, um, Tracy June. Uh, this is about you guys. It's not just about me. And so I had several people that came and said, yeah. I want to co-host with you. I want to be a part of your mission and part of your pur purpose because it's also my mission and my purpose. So I'm going to drum roll, tell you who our new co-host is. So <laughs> um, our new co-host, guys, please forgive me. My legs are killing me. Um, so I'm having to stand up. Um, so I have a special announcement. <sighs> I was supposed to have one associate co-host, but I had two people that I was heavily considering and was very, very proud that they were even interested. Um, and so I had two people left and it was kind of torture because I said, 
both of them would be amazing associate co-hosts. They would be great. Um, the reason why I decided to get a co-host is because sometimes, ugh, sorry, people, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. All right, I'm trying to get situated. Um, so the reason why I decided to uh, get a associate co-host was because um, there are days that my pain levels are at a 20 and I hate to cancel a show when I have someone that is wanting to share their story with you. So I decided that I need backup. I need support so that the Speak Up and Inspire series never misses a Monday night at eight o'clock um, because I noticed that when I've had to cancel, maybe because the person wasn't available anymore or because I was in too much pain, I noticed that I started getting inbox messages, which says that people are watching and I don't want to disappoint. And I, if I'm doing something good and you're doing something good, I want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on in the community with you. So I decided to get a associate co-host. I had two people left. <laughs> so what happened was I was going to interview both of them on separate days um, so that you could get to know who they are because you have to see them every Monday when I'm not available. And um, I wanted you to feel just as connected to them as you did to me. So I was supposed to do interviews for them. One of those days I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't do her interview. I was supposed to do the next interview for the second person. And she was like, you know what? Hold up. Why can't we both be associate co-hosts? And I was like, what? Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, I did think of that. I just didn't know. Anyway, um, it was suggested. Why don't we both be co-hosts so that when I'm not available and the one co-host is not available, then the second co-host would be available. So guess what? We have two new associate co-hosts. One is or has been a guest on the Speak Up and Inspire series. She was one of my first guests last year, and we are about to come on up on our year anniversary, January 21st, 2020. I think we need to have a party. Um, so we have we are going to have two associate co-hosts. The first one is Miss Katrina Thomas. Miss Katrina Thomas is going to be one of our associate co-hosts, and I am so excited to have her. She is not only my sister from the DMV area, she is like she is a mentor to me. She supports me in everything I do ever since the day I met her. I support her in everything that she does. She's amazing. Um, she is gonna be one of the Speak Up and Inspire, Speak Up and Inspire co-hosts. But then the other young lady who actually suggested having two co-hosts, Miss Alicia Richardson, is also going to be our associate co-host. So not only do you get to see my ugly face, you get to see theirs too. So Monday nights at 8, hopefully from this point on, you will not have a missed episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series because now I have plenty of hope. Sorry, help. It is kind of hopeful help. <laughs> so hopefully there will not be another Speak Up and Inspire series episode that is missed unless it's a holiday because we do take a break. Um, but now hopefully you will not have to miss one because one of them will be there to back me up and to support me. So I'm going to be changing the flyers and everything on the Speak Up and Inspire series page so that we can do this together as partners um, to bring you inspirational people in the community just like you and just like me okay so that is my special announcement i will be talking about it all week along with everything else that is going on um hopefully we will get um them on live sometime before the first well no we can't do that because that's tomorrow but hopefully sometime in the first week of October um, so that you can meet them personally with me um, and there you go that's my special announcement time is almost out remember 
please post your event flyers, your, your event links, your websites um, for your businesses, your services, your products, your brand. Share it on the comments. I will be sharing it um, throughout the week, throughout the month. Um, I will make sure that I refer back to this video so I can make sure that I am shouting out as many people as I can. This is a big month for advocates. This is a big month for, for the community. This is a big month for you and for me and it's domestic violence awareness month and breast cancer awareness month um, we will talk more about breast cancer awareness month because i'm a survivor of that too i'm a survivor of a lot of things hmm. yeah i don't know if that's good or bad <laughs> But the fact that I'm a survivor, I guess that's good. So we'll be talking about that too. And I'm hoping to get a special guest on before the end of the month. But I'm not going to tell you who because she might be too shy to come on live. So I hope everyone has a great day. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Please, please, please be watching out on the Speak Up and Inspire Inspire. Facebook page, like us so that you can see all the events that are going on, but also drop them in the comments along with your brand, your services, your websites, and all of that. Okay? So thank you. Have a good night. And Tracy, we need to reschedule because I see you're still watching and I so appreciate you for being a trooper. So stay tuned. We will see you tomorrow for a very special interview with Shy Tara tomorrow to talk to her about her journey and what's going on with her and how the healthcare system really needs to change for people like her and for me who really have just got the short end of the stick at times when trying to um, find out diagnosis and get help to get better and live a more healthy life. Good night. See you tomorrow.